This is the second class. I understand the first one was really great and everybody had a wonderful time. Secondly, birthday cards are back. We will once again be finding birthday cards for our St. John's family. We know it means a lot to those who receive them. Each Sunday, the cards will be in the parlor. And for those of you who need the reminder, that's back in the corner. Uh, so please stop by and sign your name and greetings to those celebrating birthdays that week. This is also for our August project for our year admission. We will collect money to purchase headphones for the students at Lindbrook Elementary School. The headphones allow for individual learning on the computer or with audiobooks. If you would like to contribute, please make your check payable to St. John's with Lindbrook in the memo line. If you need more information, contact Ann Moore. Fall Sunday School for Adults. It's been a while. Sunday morning this fall, we'll have an adult Sunday school class called Acts, Awakening to God in Everyday Life. It's a six-week video Bible study of the book of Acts by Melissa Spoltra. If you're interested, please register early so the class materials may be ordered. For more information, contact Jim Lehman, pastor retired at, of the United Methodist Church, and his contact information is also in the bulletin. And last but not least, next week is a very special Sunday. I, this is great. We're having real cake. <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, after worship next Sunday, you are invited to Donaldson Hall for cake and punch to celebrate the 66th year that St. John's has been in ministry in the North Springfield community. It's been a long time since we've gathered together in Donaldson Hall for fellowship. So come join the party. And for those who are joining us online, feel free to stop by and come and have a good time. The flowers on the altar are in honoring our 51st plus years together and a wonderful companionship. Thanks for everything, Woody. The flowers on the organ, or the organ wall, and that's what we call it, I guess, are in celebration of Ray and Ming Cribb's 50th wedding anniversary. <laughs> 50 years. And I see in the back corner my buddy Rick Garrison is here this morning. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Wonderful to see. So, does anybody else have an announcement they'd like to share? No? Okay, if not, let us join in our opening hymn, page number 64 in your hymnal, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
will you call, join me in the call to worship? Come, hear the call of God. Speak of me to my people. We are the extraordinary folks. Who will listen? I will give you the words. I will always be with you as you speak my words of truth and justice and love. We gather here to worship you. I praise you for your love and presence. And we thank them for the call you have given us. Give us to respond to your call. And now let us join in the affirmation of faith. It can be found on page 881 in your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father. From thence he fell down to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Your guilt is taken away, 
and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Now, this is the word of God for the people of God. I read that this particular passage is one of the most quoted scriptures in the Old Testament. You've probably heard it before. I hope so. Probably the sheer poetry and godliness of the passage is attractive to people. There are a number of call stories in the Bible, Noah, Abraham, Moses, to name a few of the well-known ones. But let's take a minute to think about this passage. If Isaiah is one of the most quoted popular books in the Old Testament, why do you think that is? Is it the poetic writing? Is it also that the book of Isaiah foresees the coming of a savior, which is why it's included in the lectionary text during Advent? And I love this passage, but let's look a little closer. It's easy to read a passage without understanding by reading before or after. And that's important when we look at this in our lesson for today. This is a vision that Isaiah is relying on, a vision, not an actual conversation. He sees himself stepping up to fill the void left by the recent death of King Uzziah, a beloved king of Judah who became king at 16 and ruled for 52 years, part of the time as co-regent with his father. He was faithful to God and did what that which was right in the eye of the Lord. Isaiah was his first cousin, and they were very close. And the king's death was a very personal event for Isaiah. So Isaiah responds in his grief with a sense of call in a vision that he will step up and become the new king. It's a beautiful scripture. But if we read further, we will find that it doesn't take long for Isaiah to begin having second thoughts. Oops, what was I thinking? I'm not equipped to do that. And while he doesn't end up becoming king, he becomes a very important prophet in the Old Testament, which was another way of saying he answered God's call. So, here we are. The last few years have been a trial for us. In many ways, the pandemic and its consequences have brought life-changing challenges for most of us in many ways, as individuals, as a community, as a church, and as a country. Life basically came to a standstill during the early months of the pandemic. It seized life itself, not only here, but around the world. We became like prisoners in our own homes, churches, along with so many businesses, schools, etc. They were no longer open and functioning as we had known them. It was and remains in many places very scary times. And let's face it, we don't like change. One thing St. John's can be proud of is its quick response to the cancellation of worship services within our church building. For the first week of the lockdown, we were silent. But the second week, we were ready to face the new reality and were able to return to worship electronically with a streamlined service, a sermon, some music, and a prayer. Now, what we were used to, but we remained faithful to our calling as a church to continue sharing the word of God with others. I can tell you that one of those who had already been scheduled to preach on the second Sunday of this new media, it was Encore Sunday, and standing in this pulpit with an almost empty sanctuary was strange. I say almost because I was joined by Pastor J.W., who provided a musical solo accompanied by himself on the piano, and our terrific media coordinator, Brian Strong, who ran between the sound booth and this little camera up here located in front of the pulpit. But I must tell you, 
with all honesty, that your beautiful faces are an incredible improvement over a room full of empty pews. Looking out, and nobody's there, takes a while to adjust to the fact that online, we're there with one another, and, and now there are so many Zoom things. Anybody here hasn't learned to Zoom in the last couple of years? So, I can say that I can envision all of you watching through Facebook that I have done myself now. It's a new world, but an old world. And since we reopened, our in-person worship has nearly two years ago, with restrictions and safety measures in place, we have grown through both venues of worship. St. John's is back and going forward with a new sense of life and purpose. Can you feel it? There's already plans to upgrade our video and sound equipment, which will improve our sound quality in the sanctuary and improve our online presence with those of you who join through live streaming and through Facebook. We're working on starting our education programs for children and adults. We're looking at ways to improve our outreach to those in the community. And you'll see in the back our first adult Sunday school class that's advertised. And we hope you will all please come and join it and be together. We're working on exploring other enhancements to our sanctuary and ways to improve our communication. There's a song that comes to mind when I was thinking about moving on from the pandemic. It's an old song. None of you would remember it. It's from 1936. But I think it's still very relevant today. It was a song sung and danced by Fred Astaire who some of you may have seen in old movies and things. It was written by Dorothy Fields and Jerome Kern. The name of the song is Pick Yourself Up and addresses all kinds of challenges in life. And the refrain goes like this. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and start all over again. And have you ever heard that? And isn't that what we need to do? And we do it a lot. Just as fresh as 3,000-year-old scriptures to guide us on how to go forward. And we're not starting over. We're moving ahead. The time is now. We're not waiting for the world to be at peace, poverty to be eliminated, pandemics to permanently disappear, politics to be love fests, or the Methodist Church to settle its feuding. The time to move forward is now. We work for God, and he has a mission for us. People need to know how we are all forgiven through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, and it's our job to share that message. I've always been fascinated with the direction of the disciples. After experiencing the horror of Jesus' crucifixion, the ultimate betrayal by Judas, a trusted member of their knit group. Do you know what they did? After Jesus ascended into heaven and left them in charge, they had a meeting. We're Methodists, we know all about meetings. <laughs> and they elected a new member to return their group to 12. I've always been fascinated by that thought. I don't think I would have done that, but they felt called to do that. A man named Matthias, he had become a follower. They picked themselves up, dusted themselves off, and started all over again. Look what they accomplished. Twelve people, all it took. And look where it is today. I just wonder if you can imagine, what if Jesus had internet? <laughs> Or John Wesley, although I think he might have just talked people to death because apparently his sermons were very long. And in modern society, we don't sit through two-hour sermons. Would you like me to try? <laughs> so, 
Next week, we are going to celebrate 66 years of ministry at St. John's Church. Plus, worship with us, please worship with us, and celebrate. If you can, consider joining us for the first fellowship gathering in Donaldson Hall in some time, where I have been assured we are having real cake. So, how are we going to accomplish all of these things we want to do? Through God's help and our own determination to answer the call. When God calls and asks, who shall I send? We respond, send me. I want to close by sharing something I recently found written by Mother Teresa. I used to pray that God would feed the hungry, or do this, or that. But now I pray he will guide me to do whatever. I'm supposed to do what I can do. I used to pray for answers, but now I'm praying for strength. I used to believe that prayer changes things, but now I know prayer changes us. And we change things. It's time for us to move on, pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and start all over again, or whatever it takes to continue as disciples of Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we thank you for calling us to be your disciples, to share the word, and to be your hands and feet in the world. Give us the strength and commitment to do the work that come needs to be done, the vision to know what we need to do, and help us to do it now. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So today is the first day of our next step. Not tomorrow. Not at, you know, it's always popular to start things during Advent, right? Nice season. But we need to start now because God has been waiting. And it's time. So, now we're going to gather joys and concerns. Does anyone have anything they'd like to share? Yes. I have a joy. My niece, Eunice Morgan, is visiting with me this weekend, and so uh, I brought her to her old church when she was Okay, she's got some Sunday school. Welcome. Welcome. We love to have visitors. Thank you for the prayer for my four year old cousin who um, is fighting cancer. He says some more chemo treatment, so keep those prayers for me. Hi, Carol's, Carol's nephew? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very difficult times. Anyone else? If not, let's have a prayer. Oh, gracious God, we raise to you the sadness that needs your healing touch. Losses and illnesses are difficult. Difficult for families, especially when it's a child. But we know that you were there to support the parents, to wrap your arms around the children. And to we know that you always, no matter what happens, that you will be there for them. We thank you for bringing us a visitor this morning. It is always a joy to have family visit. And we just thank you that you brought her here this morning. And go with her as she leaves us. We ask that you be with the world. Boy, it's a mess. With, there's still war going on. There's still 
so much unpleasantness. There's violence, shootings, people who have lost their jobs, people who are struggling to pay their bills. We know that all of those things cannot be done in an instant, but we know that you were there helping them and sustaining them while we figure out how to do this. And we pray for the Methodist Church. Please help them to get over their bickering, that we might go on and, and do the vision that John Wesley had for us, that we might once again be a premier force in the world to do good and to follow your lead. We thank you that all things we can bring to you and that you will take care of us and that you listen to us. And that's very important. And so we ask all things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, if you are, as you are able, will you stand and sing our closing hymn, here I am, Lord.
If you are making contributions online or some other way, we thank you. Uh, and we bless everything that is given to us. It will be used to God's work. And now I charge you to leave this place, to take God in your heart, to leave your heart and your mind on the table for God to see and for God to use. We are his people. We are his voice in the world. So go in peace, and may the God of peace go with you. Amen.